but talking about risk solutions and implying it into developing countries, uh, most of the population, maybe even 99% of developing countries, don't have a credit history. Is that the case in some of the developing countries? I mean, how are you going to resolve that? Well, there's actually, you know, around the world, there are underbanked consumers everywhere. Now, of course, in Asia and some of the developing uh, economies, you have a greater proportion. But even in the United States, uh, you know, arguably the most developed country in the world, you have you know, 50, 45, 50 million consumers that are either un, uh, underbanked or unbanked. Uh, we've worked uh, with banks and other creditors for years to bring together alternative data to have an assessment of credit worthiness on those individuals. And what's interesting is that many of them, uh, while they sometimes are viewed as risky because of the lack of uh, credit information, uh, they're actually very low risk customers. Uh, so it truly proves that having alternative data on consumers, you can invite more, uh, more people into the financial system uh, without creating additional risk. Uh, and if you want to take that example to the UK, uh, the same holds. You have the same type of proportion in the United Kingdom. And again, we're bu building credit scoring uh, techniques on alternative data. Mm -hmm. And then of course, in the developing countries, uh, the percentage increases. For example, in Brazil, uh, where you have a smaller population overall than the United States, but you have double the number of underbanked and unbanked consumers, up to 100 million. Uh, that's almost a half, you know, half the population. And uh, China, you can look at the same example, uh, and it, you're probably talking about a quarter of a billion people that potentially are underbanked. And you know, one of the challenges in any economy is to maintain stable and consistent growth. Typically, that's going to be done off the you know, consumer population, consumer consumption. Uh, certainly is what happens in the United States. We bring more people into that, uh, you know, that economy into the, uh, uh, d within a given jurisdiction. And I know in Brazil and China, they're going to have the same type of benefits for the long run. It, so it sounds like a uh, risk science uh, that's behind it. You take it from zero and you make it to hero. I mean, uh, China has a really a strict law uh, legislations and uh, how do you deal with compliance in all these countries? Well, every country is different. So, I, you know, there, there's unique privacy laws. Uh, oftentimes people think of the United States as not having strong privacy protection, but we have very well established privacy laws. Uh, so depending upon how you're using the data, uh, there is, uh, you know, strict laws that have to be adhered to, mm -hmm. uh, and that really pertains to most every country. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually much easier to operate where there are uh, well-established laws around privacy and data usage uh, than where in countries where there maybe they don't have that body of law. Uh, so it's it's really possible to uh, really bring together interesting data on everyone. Uh, really in any, uh, in any population, and you mentioned risk science, that's what we view our company, uh, is really about, not just about bringing together interesting data capabilities, but it's really the technology uh, to ingest vast amounts of data, uh, the big data capability to handle endless amounts of data, um, and, you know, and the uh, linking ability to bring it all together. If you can't bring it together and have a uh, you know a, a, an appropriate view on every entity, whether it's a, a natural person or a company, uh, it, all of the effort really is, is is worthwhile. So it's very critical to have uh, that technology, which we refer to as risk science, mm -hmm. um, at the at the cornerstone of, of, of everything we do. You mentioned that some countries, they don't have a strict privacy law. I'm sure that uh, Brazil and China are really far away from this. And people might be scared to exposure in order to actually get the banking system. Uh, uh, how, how easy it is actually to uh, connect with people and to actually build that privacy um, law, privacy, um, you know, another in Brazil and China. Well, there are certainly standards in all in all countries, and, and uh, again, some privacy laws are stronger than others. But it's a, it's what's important is working with industry, working with the custodians of the data. Uh, our role is to try to solve the some of the most challenging problems of the day, and that's best done with industry. So, for example, in Brazil, working with the banking industry, uh, they deal with data as a, a course of their business day in and day out. Uh, so it's just a, a matter of making sure that you work with. Uh, you know, either local industry, other other groups. We've long been a provider of solutions to the insurance industry. Uh, again, that's cr that's critical to work with uh, industry participants that control the data uh, and figure out the right way to solve a particular problem. Uh, so we have 
you know, unique business models that we deploy rather than the traditional framework of just taking the data from a bank and reselling the data on to everyone who wants to buy it. Oftentimes, we'll create an environment where the data custodian, the bank, the insurance company, they remain in control of the data. Uh, and we help them uh, unlock that information through either a unique business model and, and of course, underpinned by our technology. How long uh, would it take to actually establish an um, efficient uh, risk uh, system or optional solution in a country as Brazil, one of the biggest countries in the world? Well, it's a, it's a tall order. I mean, it, if you want to compare Brazil to the United States, uh, I mean, Brazil has a very advanced banking system. Uh, they have well-established uh, information providers in Brazil. Uh, so it's, it, but yet, if you compare it to the United States, uh, lots of the alternative data um, has not been brought together to form uh, that you know unified view that allows uh, a co you know complete assessment of the population. Uh, that takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of um, infrastructure development. Uh, it takes uh, co uh, cooperation with many parties, the government, as well as other. Uh, other entities. So that's a, it's an ongoing challenge that will take take some time. Uh, we hope to play a, a, a useful role in that. That's our, our objective is to deploy our experience. Uh, but ultimately it's going to be, you know, potentially the banks, the government to drive uh, a lot of that. What we want them to understand is what's possible uh, with uh, creative thinking and the best technology. Would Lexus Nexus ever consider going to the market which has an uh, unstable political situation? Well, we actually operate in a hundred countries around the world, mm -hmm. and so you have different political climates in you know, all those markets. So uh, we probably have uh, have business where there is uh, uh, some unstable events. Uh, there's there tends to be higher risk uh, for financial institutions. So we see our role there as useful. Mm -hmm. um, and it really what it comes down to for us when we invest in large markets is having a large enough. Uh, population, a large enough um, investment base to be able to uh, really leverage our technology. So in smaller countries it's more challenging uh, because again you're not talking about as many uh, individuals uh, and really what, what we're able to do is bring vast amounts of data together uh, and that does require some investment mm -hmm. uh, but I think we're you know right now we're operating around the world either in terms of selling services uh, but also uh, bringing together data on heightened risk individuals we cover over 240 jurisdictions mm -hmm. uh, and it's you've got to go where the risk is located and from an anti-money laundering perspective uh, where you know you're dealing with terrorism uh, financing um, you know, proceeds from uh, from illicit activities mm -hmm. that's occurring. You know, everywhere and where there's chaos, that can breed more crime and instability.